makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Open this door. United States Army wants information from Mrs. Joseph Ackland. We won't harm you if you don't try to resist. Yes, yes sir. Miss Ackland ain't here. Sorry, I think she is. But, but, please, mister. Come on, men. Inside. Yes, sir. Well, now you can tell the folks at home you've seen Belmont. Why, this is a regular castle. Supposed to be the most beautiful estate around Nashville. You know, I'm getting kind of tired of my billet. Yeah. Let's move in here. All right. That's enough. You, where's your mistress? I, I, I don't know, mister. Ah, uh, Mrs. Ackland. What was it, please? Oh, good afternoon, ma'am. I'm Major Gail Thurston, with the Union forces occupying the city. I'm looking for Dr. Berry and Lindsley, president of the University of Nashville. Well, have you tried the university? Naturally. But we're proceeding on the assumption that he's taken refuge with one of his close friends. And according to this list, he seems to have quite a few. Besides you, there's Morton, Foster, McGavick, Cooper, Pope. That last name means something, Mrs. Ackland? Well, no. I... Who is Mrs. S.C. Pope? You mustn't go there. You mustn't disturb her. Please. I see. My thanks, Mrs. Ackland. You've been most helpful. All right, boys, come on. I think I know where we can find our man. Yes, sir. Uh... Go to the door, won't you, dear? Of course, Mrs. Poe. Oh. Well, good afternoon. Dr. Lindsley's friends get prettier and prettier. You're Mrs. S.C. Polk? No, I'm not. Who is it, Ida? Uh, Major Gail Thurston, ma'am. United States Army. I'm here to search these premises. Oh, I'm sorry, but you can't come in here. I'm sorry, too, miss. But I'm under orders from Governor Johnson. Who did you say it was, dear? Good afternoon, sir. I'm Mrs. Polk. Good afternoon, ma'am. Is Dr. Berry and Lindsley in this house? Dr. Lindsley? Why, yes, he's about someplace. He what? Do, do come in, sir. I don't believe I heard your name. But I... Don't be timid, young man. Speak up. Thurston, didn't you say what, Major? I'm delighted to meet you, sir. This is my friend, Miss Ida Forster. Now, come along to the parlor. We're just having tea. But, uh, ma'am, about Dr. Lindsley... Oh, he's in the library, I believe. His nose deep in some of Mr. Polk's most treasured books. How do you take your tea, Major? Ma'am, you don't seem to understand. I'm here to arrest this man. And you don't seem to understand, sir, but you can't. As long as he's at Pope Place. Why not? Well, you see, Major, Nashville is my home. So my sympathies are naturally with the South. But I love my country, too, as my husband did before me. That's why, Major, the authorities have declared Mrs. Polk's home immune. But why should Mrs. Polk be an exception? You, a northerner, and you don't even recognize the widow of a president of the United States. Polk. Wait a minute. So Mrs. James K. Polk? That's right. But it said Mrs. S.C. on the list. My given name, Sarah Childress. Now, you didn't tell me how you liked your tea. Mrs. Polk, this is a serious matter. A lady of your standing harboring a dangerous man? <laughs> Dr. Lindsley. <laughs> What's so amusing, Miss Foster? <laughs> that dear patient man, dangerous. <laughs> this is the military governor's idea, not mine. How nice it is for you, army men. You can always blame someone higher up. Oh, now, 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 both of you. I don't want the war brought into this house. As long as I occupy it, it will remain as Mr. Polk would have wished it. A kind of island of peace. And I think I've threatened its peace long enough. Dr. Lindsay, don't come in here. Why not? I'll be apprehended sooner or later. Right, young man? That's correct, sir. Then in order to spare these ladies further embarrassment, it may as well be sooner. I'm ready, Major. <laughs> Major Thurston reporting, Governor Johnson. I brought Dr. Lindsley in. Good. 
Come in, please, both of you. Thank you, sir. Now, sir. Yes, Governor John. It has come to my attention that you will refuse to take the oath of allegiance to the United States, as is required of all citizens in this territory. That is correct, sir. You realize that you, as president of the University of Nashville, are setting a dangerous example of rebellion, even treason. If I signed the oath, sir, I'd be setting an example of perjury. Can you deny your university has been a breeding place of treason among you young men of this area? Sir, it has carried on its proper role in the development of culture and nothing else. Yet almost all its students are now in Confederate service. They would be, sir, if they had never seen the university. Dr. Lindsley, I am prepared to direct that the university property, including buildings, equipment, and books, be completely destroyed. Governor Johnson, you can't mean that. I can indeed. But, Governor... And the responsibility will be yours, not mine. But, Governor Johnson... You will be given three days under guard at your residence. At the end of that time, if you still refuse to take the oath, the order will be carried out. Good day, sir. My order lay will escort you home. Good day, sir. Well, my compliments, Major Thurston, on your work in finding this man. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir... It's not my place to question your orders. You think this one is too severe? The usual alternative for signing the oath is prison. To destroy an entire university. Well, if you'll forgive me, sir, I don't think I'd sleep very well with that on my conscience. Major, that man would gladly go to prison for his principles. But he'll think twice before he'll allow the university to be sacrificed. But, sir, if you don't need... Young man, your duty is to follow orders, not to question them. Yes, sir. We'll be in charge of guarding Dr. Lindsley and the campus until day after tomorrow when he gives me his answer. And if he still refuses to sign the oath? It will then be your responsibility to see that the university is burned to the ground. Oh, Major Thurston. Good evening, Miss Foster. I hoped you'd still be here. What have they done with Dr. Lindsley? He's at home at the campus under guard. Is it for refusing to take the oath of allegiance? If he only would, Miss Foster, things would be so much simpler. And why are you so concerned? Because I... Well, I did violate Mrs. Polk's immunity by arresting him in her house. And I think I should apologize to her. It's a bit late for that now, don't you think? Do you think it is? Well, I... I suppose I should appreciate it when at least one northerner tries to be decent. Come inside. I'll tell Mrs. Polk you're here. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Miss Ida. Yes? If I had come here this afternoon just to pay my respects to Mrs. Polk, would you have hated me as much as you do? You're a part of the Union Army, aren't you? Marching through our streets, breaking into our homes to arrest us, forcing us to sign an oath we don't believe in. Well, I guess that answers my question. No. No, it doesn't. I think I like you very much, Major, if... If I were a Confederate officer, is that it? It isn't just the war, it's... It's everything that's different in our way of living and thinking. Miss Ida, those differences have been overcome many times before. And Mrs. Polk wants them forgotten in this house. And I'd like to forget them. But then I think of Dr. Lindsay or Major Thurston. He, he's as close to me as my own kin. What's going to happen to him? He has until day after tomorrow. Then, if he doesn't sign that oath, the university will be burned. What? Oh, no. Don't believe me, Miss Ida. It's the most difficult task I've ever had to face. That's why I had to ask you had to know how you might have felt it. You. You. What does it matter to you whether the life of one man, one quiet little professor who's never harmed anyone, is destroyed? And if you do this thing, it will kill him. But don't you understand? This is an order. I can't disobey. You come here, and for a moment, I think you are decent. I don't care how many orders you have, how difficult it is. You're going to do it, aren't you? Destroy books, buildings, the means for learning, and most of all, the life of a good man. All he has to do is sign that oath. But he won't. So you might as well get on with your book burning and your arrest. Very well. Good evening, Miss Ida. Please convey my regrets to Mrs. Polk. Major Thurston. Hi, dear. What's all this? I heard voices out here. He and then came to say he was sorry. I, I suppose it isn't his fault, but I couldn't help blaming him. Who, oh, dear? Major Thurston. Oh. What did he tell you about Dr. Lynn? Oh, Mrs. Polk. They're going to destroy the university. Oh, my dear. Oh, it's his life. How can they do it to him? How can we stop them? I don't know. I'll find some way. I'm not the first lady of the land any longer, either. But I still have a voice. I'll find some way. You 
are listening to Dinner at Belmont, starring Janet Blair as Ida Foster and featuring Les Damon and Marjorie Maud on the Cavalcade of America, presented by the DuPont Company, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Nashville, Tennessee, one of the South's loveliest cities, occupied in 1862 by Union forces. All citizens are required to sign an oath of allegiance to the United States. Among them, Dr. Barry N. Lindsley. Nashville University is to be destroyed if he refuses. And at the home of Sarah Polk, widow of President James K. Polk. Come out here, Major Thurston. You haven't seen my garden. Very beautiful, ma'am. Here. Yeah. I'll cut your nose, Gay. There must be some young lady who'd be delighted with these. Oh, I'm afraid she wouldn't accept them. Dear me, she must have a heart of stone. <laughs> well, told me she has. If I were anyone else. If I hadn't been detailed to see that the university is destroyed. Yes, I know. Well, have you thought it out, son? Have you thought what you might do about it? I spent a very long night, Mrs. Pope, trying to think it out. Governor Johnson won't change his mind? No, ma'am. Well... Have you tried talking to Dr. Lindsay? You're not suggesting I try to persuade him to change his mind. Oh, no, no, not I. But as Mr. Polk used to say, when a young man in love sets out to move a mountain, watch out. He doesn't know it's impossible, so he does it. Major Thurston, good afternoon, sir. Come in, come in. Thank you, sir. I'm afraid I have no refreshments to offer you at the moment, sir. However, there is someone coming a little later. Well, then I'll be brief. Uh, sir, I came to ask you if you'd made your decision. They want to know tomorrow, and... Well, it's very important to me. Indeed. Well, I made my decision in Governor Johnson's office. You let these buildings, this university, these books be destroyed... because you, one man, are stubborn? My friend... Those books and letters help tell the story of America. If integrity is destroyed, then so is their meaning to those who will read them in the future. What would the Constitution of the United States be but an empty sheet of paper if we hadn't tried all these years to live by its precepts? But, sir, you're fighting to break away from the Constitution. I believe the Constitution gives me that right. You, a northerner, believe the reverse. So we apply the ancient prescription which has never yet effected a cure. War. Dr. Lindsley... One side must give in eventually. I would ask you for my sake, but those books belong to the future and to the students who will use them in years to come. Do you suppose I haven't thought of them, sir? I don't know what your stake is in this, but theirs is very real to me. Then you must change your mind. Yes? Uh, please excuse me a moment. Dr. Lindsay, I got here, I, sir. My dear, Mrs. Pope was here earlier. She said you'd be stopping by with food from Belmont's garden. Uh, uh, come on in the park. Oh, no, you have company. Major Thurston. Good afternoon, Miss Ida. Has something happened? You're going to release him? There's only one way he can be released, Miss Ida. You know what it is. Please don't worry, my dear. He hasn't succeeded in changing my mind. Oh, well then, I'll be going. There are greens in the basket. I picked them especially for you, Dr. Lindsley. Good day, gentlemen. But Miss Ida, wait a minute. Excuse me, please, Dr. Lindsley. Of course. But Miss Ida. I don't think we have anything further to say, have we? Listen... Mrs. Pope gave me the idea of coming. I see now it was because she knew you'd be here. I love Mrs. Pope very dearly. But since she doesn't take sides, she can't possibly know how I feel. But isn't there a way of feeling, Miss Ida, that erases all differences? I knew yesterday when I saw you first. I've known it more surely every hour since. Then, then what is the answer? If you feel as I do, we'll find an answer. I, I do. I, I think I do. But you're going to carry out that order. I must. I have no choice. Then, for us, there is no answer. It's hopeless. Good day, Major Thurston. Ida, is that you? Yes, Mrs. Pope. Come in, dear. Mrs. Acton's come in from Belmont. We're just having a cup of tea. Oh, well... Then if you don't mind, I, I'd better go on home. Oh, those tears. Oh, my dear, I am sorry. 
You're very sweet, Mrs. Polk, and I, I know you tried to help Major Thurston and me, but there isn't any use. Major Thurston? The young man who came to search Belmont? Yes, Mrs. Acklin. I've just seen him at Dr. Lindsley's. And so, those tears. You see, Adelisha, these young people are in love. But, Ida, you hardly know this young man. Oh, she's right, Mrs. Acklin. All I know is that it happened the moment we looked at each other. I can't tell you why or how, but we both knew it right away. I can understand that. But a union officer. Not only that, he's under Governor Johnson's orders to burn the university. I know it's the only thing he can do, but... Well, I'd like to bring that Governor Johnson out to Belmont and serve him a good dinner. I'll wager he'd change his mind soon enough. Adelicia, that may be an idea. Of course. And, and if Mrs. Polk should be the guest of honor, Governor Johnson couldn't refuse your invitation. Dean at Belmont, as it was in the old days. If I only had one of my college hams left in the cellar. I'll get one somehow. We'll gather together every last crumb of food we have. And I'll find someone to play with, with candlelight and music. Don't raise your hopes too high, my dear. It may not be enough. But what else can we do? Either... As Mr. Polk used to say, nothing stirs the blood like a good old-fashioned tug-of-war. I'm going to see that Dr. Lindsley comes, too. But he's in custody. How can he? Adelicia, you request his presence at Belmont. Oh. I know the authorities won't refuse. Of course they won't. After all, isn't the guest of honor going to be the widow of a president of the United States? <laughs> Hello, Miss Ida. Good evening, Major Thurston. Welcome to Belmont. Miss Ida, what is this dinner all about? Would you know why I was asked to bring Dr. Lindsley to Belmont? Because Mrs. Polk isn't willing to be defeated, as you and I seem to be. Oh. Governor Johnson's coming, too. You mean she's trying to bring them together? The loveliest of women and the finest of men have gathered in this hall at Belmont. There's been brilliant conversation here, wonderful food and wine, friendship... If there's ever to be a solution to our problem, here is where it can be found. Wait, isn't that Governor Johnson now? Yes, yes, it is. Oh, he looks so cold and unimpressed. Oh, Major Thurston, I wish us luck. I do, with all my heart. Ladies and gentlemen, dinner is served. Claire, you do have quite a sense of humor, Governor Johnson. I believe you have too, Mrs. Polk. Having Dr. Lindsley and me across the table from each other. Oh, this is mild, sir. When Mrs. Polk was first lady, sometimes she seated mortal enemies right next to each other. No duels fought the next morning? Not a one. Well, they always seem to get along fine, just as you and Governor Johnson have been doing. You may serve the ice now, Jupiter. Mrs. Ackland, my compliments. This is delight. Dr. Lindsay. Yes? You know why this dinner was given tonight. I think I do. So that Governor Johnson might be persuaded. No, to... no, no. So that both of you might find a way to agree. Agree? Ida, you are not turning against me. Oh, you know I never could. I I'm only thinking, sir, of what you've taught me all my life. That learning must belong to everyone. Oh, Dr. Lindsay, I think your first and perhaps your only duty is to preserve our culture. My dear, you have also been taught the highest principles of honor. But isn't there a way, Dr. Lindley, of, of keeping yourself as far above war and political strife as those great books do? Learning and culture are neutral, aren't they? As all Mrs. Polk is. Would Governor Johnson accept that point of view from me? Well, he might not have accepted it this morning. And tomorrow, he may not. But tonight, here in these surroundings, don't you see it's our only chance? Ida, this means a great deal to you, doesn't it? It means hope for happiness the rest of my life. Very well. Oh, Mrs. Acklin, Mrs. Polk, ladies and gentlemen, I beg your indulgence for a moment because I have a proposal to make to Governor Johnson. As you know, our guest of honor, Mrs. Polk, has always been regarded with respect by both sides in this struggle. I regard the university, all that it represents, as an extension of that neutrality. Governor Johnson, I am willing, sir, to give my word of honor that in exchange for your dropping this demand that I take the oath, I will not help the Confederacy in any way. I will remain neutral and do my best to serve our country. 
Won't you accept that proposal, Governor Johnson? I'd have only his word to go on. What is the oath of allegiance, sir, but a man's word? And if you know him to be signing that against his will... A very strong argument, Miss Foster. Oh, please, sir, please. Think what the university will mean to us after the war. It can't do you any harm now. There are no students. Dr. Lindsay himself can't harm you if he's given his word of honor. Oh, Governor Johnson, it's, it's so important to all of us. Won't you consider it, please? I don't believe I have to consider it further, Miss Foster. I accept the proposal. As of this moment, the case of Dr. Lindsley is closed. Oh, that is a Thank you, Miss Ida. Yes. You were a most convincing Porsche this evening. Thank you. Uh, there's, uh, another case I wish you'd plead. For whom? Myself. Oh? And, um, to whom would I plead? Yourself. I, uh, I have already. And are we enemies still? Some spring. There'll be an evening like this, Gail. It'll be at Belmont or Pope Place or home, and the war will be over. If you come to me then, my darling, and ask me to plead your case, well, you know what my verdict will be. All of it happened long ago. Today, the tramp of armed and hostile men is heard no more in Nashville, but the mansion of Belmont still rises serenely above its tall hill. Its ancient dignity has survived the changes of the years, for it's part of Ward Belmont now, a college, where young girls from all parts of the nation gather in that great hall, the hall where, in another time, other young people's dreams came true before the eyes of a first Lady of the Land, Sarah Polk of Nashville. Original cavalcade play, Dinner at Belmont, was written by Virginia Radcliffe and was adapted from incidents in the novel of the same title by Alfred Leland Crabb, published by Bob's Merrill. Music was composed by Arden Cornwell, conducted by Donald Bryan. Next week, Cavalcade will present a lively and original radio play, Honest John Gaminsky and the Thirteen Uncle Sam. Our star will be Oscar Homolka, whose delightful stage, screen, and radio appearances never fail to captivate audiences. So be sure to listen. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Ted Pearson. Our economic system has brought more benefits to more people than any other system in history. To refute propaganda attacks from those who would take it from us, we should learn all we can about the American way. All of us ought to read a recently published booklet, The Miracle of America. You can get it by writing Box 10, Times Square Station, New York City. Cavalcade of America is directed by John Zoller and comes to you each week from the stage of the Long Acre Theater on Broadway in New York and is presented by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Thank mm-hmm. you.